Praise God. Thank you very much. You can see now. I think you can hear me, Pastor Nilo, and everybody who's listening to me. Thank you very much. Praise God. Without further ado, to those who are listening to us, to me personally, in Hong Kong, in Macau, in the Philippines, and all parts of the world, praise God. If you listen to this, my prayers is it will really help you boost your personal life and personal walk with God. It will transform you from the inside out and I pray that it would happen powerfully. We will be mightily used by God in this end times. Praise God. God bless you. This is the message of the Lord for us today. We have been attacked by this pandemic and we cannot escape. But according to the first verse that I will read, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, praise God. If you can see that here, praise God. It talks about this particular word that I'm going to emphasize. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. There is no temptation unique to each and every one of us. Everyone will and in time will experience the same testing. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. The title of this talk lesson is this, The Greatest or Greatest Escape. God bless you. Listen to this broadcast. Amen. All of our lives, we have been plagued by games, crushes, and love, you know, puppy love, or whatever, temptation, movies, um, you know, um, peer pressure, games, and apps that are not really healthy in our walk with God. And in that being said, as a young people, not just the pressure outside, but we are also, we have to have to obey the pressure from the Lord. Why did I say pressure from the Lord? Because the pressure of the world is pushing you on this, the other side. But the pressure of God is pushing you to draw closer to Him. The pressure to obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. This Sunday is Father's Day. You have, as a young people, should, you know, make a, make a way to let your dad be appreciated at, at least one, one every once a year. You need to respect not just your parents, not just your pastors also. You have to respect your elders and even respect people that are below you. Some young people do not move forward. They become stagnate. They become stagnant. They remain. They don't want to grow. They want to stay like that. The problem with games is it's not reality. You can be level 999 and a certain game, but how about your real life? Are you moving forward? How about your walk with God? Are you leveling up? Are you moving forward? Are you grabbing your ability not just in in unreal environment but in the reality of life now we have to move past level one church young people who are listening to me you have to move to move fa forward when david said it like this i was young praise god and now i'm old he also experienced being young but you don't remain a young person forever Temptation comes when you grow older each year. As pastor, we have a certain degree of temptations. Your parents has a certain degree of a measure of temptations. Your youth leader, your cell leaders or whatsoever, discipler, they have their own temptations. But did you know, church, that the God, Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh. He is the greatest, your greatest escape. 
So today, we'll be discussing about our greatest escape. Now, did you know that in order for you to walk through life, someone has to be there first? If in order for you to be there, to be a teacher, for example, you have to be taught. But the question is, who taught the teacher? If you want to be an engineer, somebody has to be an engineer. But the question is, who taught the engineer? If you want to be a pastor, somebody has to be a pastor first before you can be able to be trained as a pastor. So as human as we are, we can go back to wherever the first person, or the first engineer, the first teacher ever recorded in history. But you have to understand that somebody taught them also. What am I pointing at? If you want to go to life journey, life's journey, someone has to lead you that knows the way. You have to follow somebody that has already gone there, has went there, and at the same process came back to teach you. You still understand? You still get what I'm saying? Somebody has to teach you. And the greatest thing is, if somebody goes to uncharted territory without somebody leading them, it will cost you to, it, that cost you to like the death, that causes people to lose their life, lose their job because they were not trained, they were not meant to go there. We can read in John chapter 14, verse 6. It says like it, this, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father, but by Him. Jesus also experienced these kind of things. Jesus experienced testing, testings. Jesus experienced a lot of things in while He was in the world. Now, he actually experienced being mobbed. People were trying to kill him, trying to beat him down. Luke chapter 4, 28 says like this, And they and all day in synagogue, when they heard this, these things, were all filled with wrath. And then, what did it say? And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led, led him into a bro of the hill, whereon the, there, the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. Verse 30, but, but he passing through the midst of them went this way. So Jesus just went to this way, his way. Even though they planned to beat him, he went his way. How about Pharisees and Sadducees? They wanted to kill Jesus. In John chapter 10, verse 37, it says it like this, If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. And then, But if I do... Though ye believe not me, believe the works that I may, ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me, and I in Him. We know, we know that Jesus is the Father incarnate. Verse 39, Therefore they sought to kill Him, but He escaped out of their hands. Jesus is the greatest escape, so to speak, artist. Amen. What else? Who else? Even the storms. Jesus was able to escape the storms. With his disciples, he was sleeping down the deck or below the, the boat. Then the storm came. But he escaped. He actually seized the wind. He told the wind, be calm. Praise God. How about the demoniacs? The people that were possessed by evil spirit. He was able to get off with that people. With that person. On multiple accounts. Praise God. And nobody that was with Jesus, again, I will stress this, nobody that was with Jesus was possessed because the devil pleaded Jesus to jump, that they would jump to the swine. Why not jump to the people that was with Jesus? They cannot do it because Jesus was there. They were protected. Woo! Praise God. The grave and the and hell. The grave tried to possess Jesus three days. The hell tried to 
defeat Jesus, but all falter, all fade. That's why I would declare to you, church, young people who are listening to me, Jesus is our greatest escape artist. He already escaped hell, grave temptation. Satan tried to tempt him three times to no avail. He went out unscathed. He went out victorious, overcomer. That's why I'm challenging you today. If you're going to follow somebody, follow Jesus Christ. If you're going to follow something or someone, follow God alone. He is the greatest escape you can go through. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. The world wants to close your mouth. The, church, the, the school wants to shut you down. Your friends that are not going to church try to close your mouth. The world wants to close your mouth about religion. Close your mouth. About Jesus Christ. Close your mouth. About baptism in Jesus' name. Close your mouth. About receiving the Holy Ghost. Close your mouth. About apostolic identity. Close your mouth. Praise God, even in your games, even in your movies, you hide away from being an apostolic. But I tell you, we should not close our mouth. Praise God. But because of this, the young people are affected by closing our my, mouth. Our mind is inculcated that this stuff, this idea is not accepted in the world. And then, because of that, because we are not accepted, we become incognito. We try to hide away what we are. Praise God. That's why you can see young people in church, inside the church, but in the cafeteria. Inside the church, but, amen, in the back part of the church. You can see young people because they were closed. They were suppressed. They, you can see them clap like uh, passive clapping. Hallelujah. And when they say hallelujah, hallelujah, nangaluyah. Amen. Passive worshiper. And don't, don't have interest in praise no more. They don't want to jump in church. Praise God. It's exempt with the exempt of youth rallies and youth camp. Praise God when, everybody, when they can see other people. That's why it's good to have a church that is jumping even though you're old. Praise God. If you're a mature Christian, you have to jump. Why? People, children, young people are looking to you. They want to feel the fire of the Holy Ghost, not just by word, not just by, by saying it. They want to feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They want to feel. That's why some people in church, when the altar call is going on, they would kneel down, but it doesn't even pray doesn't even go to God the Lord in prayer doesn't even praise and they were they, they think that they are pressured when they pray they pray praise God but the world wants you to open your mouth to vices through alcohol to drugs they want you to open your mouth to cuss words cursing words even bad words in the Philippines they are more excited. The world wants you to talk about filthy stuff, unclean stuff. They want you to talk about uh, bad things, just so to speak, you know. I can go over and over in that, that I'm trying to hinder myself also. They want you to open your, your Facebook and look at the nude pictures and bad stuff in the internet. That's what they are trying to do to inculcate. Doing that is acceptable, but doing church is not acceptable. Going to church is not acceptable. Worshiping God is not acceptable. Watching bad stuff, acceptable. Watching prank movies, acceptable. Praise God. We are living in a dangerous wor world right now. Praise God. They want you to open games that are demoniac and uh, movies that are not good for your uh, godly lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen, even application in Facebook. The result is unfaithfulness. The result is young people, we become unfaithful. We go to church still, but we are not faithful. We do not give our tithes and offering. We do not pray. 
we we just do the action do we do the move but we're not doing what we ought to do we cl we worship we clap but there is no intensity there is no vehemence there is no power behind the worship why because it the at the back line if we are not careful I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about the faithful people. I'm not talking about those persons that are on fire with God. I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to the people who are losing their grip on the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to the people who are bitten and baited by Satan. I'm talking to you. I am going to pull you. Praise God in the name of Jesus. I, I'll try to pull you out of the snare of the enemy. Praise God. Amen. This is you. Your prayer life is going down. Your praise life is going down. Your spiritual leader, praise God. Your gasoline, your your fuel, your spiritual fuel is drain, draining down the wire. Praise God. Even though you're you are quarantined, praise God. You feel like you can you cannot worship God in your house or in wherever you are. I'm talking to you. Praise God. What you did in quarantine is the mirror of your true relationship with God. Let, let me talk to you about this. Pastor Nilo posted something in, in Facebook an hour, hours ago. That there's a specific application that turns a man to a woman, a woman to a man. Praise God. I'm, I, I agree completely with him. That's funny. I, I saw some pictures. You look cool probably you look pretty even though you're a man but it actually gives you the idea the option that you can actually pervert the the way of God but man we are Christians not just that we are apostolic we are blood-bought Holy Ghost filled tongue talking spirited people of God we do not form conform to this world we are unique we are separate from the world praise God so if there are new things like TikTok you dance but in church you don't dance some even go to the length of just you know giving themselves break just to you know people we need to grab a hold of what God wants us God wants us to draw closer to him and if you're in trouble this is the message if you're in trouble ask God for help so the question is what do we need to do what do we need to do brother Philip what do we need to do pastor number one is we read Romans 12 1 to 2 Paul said it to the Romans in Rome there's a lot of things going on there he said it like this I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your face up no that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God let me talk to you number three things Paul is trying to say number one do good things despite of your friends telling you this despite of your, your probably some of your family members doing bad things you know that, that bad that's bad you have to do number one do good say it with me do good number two Paul is trying to say to the, the people in Rome he said do things that is acceptable unto God acceptable unto God not to the world even though the world will not accept it as long as God accepts it, that's good. That's why your parents, godly parents, are training you to pray, praise, praise God, worship, give your offering to the Lord, give your tithes, you know, go to the altar, be faithful in your church. Why? Why? Because there is a battle. 
The battle is between good and evil, acceptable and unacceptable. Whether you are on this side, you look on the other side as bad. If you're doing evil, you think that the people that are doing good is evil. If you're doing good and you think you see people doing evil on the other side. Praise God. You have to choose whether you choose righteousness or unrighteousness. Whether you choose light or you choose darkness. Choose wisely. Praise God. You have to choose those who are acceptable unto God. Number three, this, amen, perfect will of God. Pastor, this is a hard thing. I don't know the perfect will of God. No, neither did I. Neither I, I don't know. I don't have the slightest idea what is the perfect will of God, but I know the will of God is for, for us to follow the word of God. That's why we have a Bible. The basic idea, the basic word, the basic fundamental doctrine are written there. Not just worldly ideas, but holiness ideas, Bible ideas. That's why they actually abbreviated Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. Bible. We have to know the will of God. Pastor, how do I know that it's that's perfect will? We cannot perfect our ways, but it is the God who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. We have to follow the will of God, and in time, He will perfect what He has started. He will perfect every word that He has written in the book. He will perfect even our salvation. Would you clap your hands to the Lord? Praise God, praise God. And lastly, this is the word that we need to keep. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Amen. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Number verse 11. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, that's the attack of the devil everywhere. Verse 13. Wherefore, take up unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days. And having done all that, to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore having your loins grid with the gospel, or the loins grit about with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15, And your feet should, with the preparation of the gospel of peace, uh, Mom Becky Backland preached, uh, teach us about uh, uh, peace, perfect peace, last two days ago, or three days. Verse 16, And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy or the wicked verse 17 and take up the take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god verse 18 praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints i will not dissect that words pastor nilo is there to, to, to teach you about that uh, my time is limited but what I'm trying to say to you is, I will show you this picture later. You have to have the armor of God or else you will fall to the snare of the enemy. This picture portrays it like this. If you can see it like this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just uh, fix it a little bit. In Ephesians chapter, the, the verse that we've read, When you take off the armor of God, you sink. But when we wear the armor of God, we will stay afloat. So, we have to wear the armor of God. We have to wear the armor of God or else we will fall to the snares of the enemy. Wear the armor of God. 
I'll go back to the verse that I've said. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation take it you, but such as are common to man. But God is faithful. Say it with me. God is faithful. Do it. God is faithful. When there is temptation, He will make, He is the greatest escape. When there is too much games going on, and you're bothered, you're angry, you're, you're depressed, run to Jesus. If there's too much movies, too much anime, run to Jesus. When there are peer pressure, run to Jesus. If there are people who say bad words and try to uh, convince you to say bad words, run to Jesus. He's your greatest escape. Blessings to all of you who are listening to, me, to us right now, to me today. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you, Father. As we lift up our hands and close your eyes, Lord, we come to you. We need you to be our constant escape for our soul. You are our strong tower. You, Lord God, is our safe place, safe haven. Lord, I pray that you would touch everyone right now. You would direct us that whatever happens to this world, whatever pandemic, whatever catastrophe, whatever temptation, whatever struggles, we can run to you as our escape. Lord God, if there are somebody who's listening to me that is not yet baptized in Jesus' name, Lord, let them find a church that baptizes in Jesus' name. If there is somebody, Lord God, who has, does not have the Holy Ghost yet, Lord God, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Father. I pray, God, even the brethren in Hong Kong, Father, even all over the world who's listening to me, bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Pastor Nilo, God bless you.